In honor of my illustrious co-host's birthday, today's episode of The Resupply is brought to you by the New England Patriots. Do you enjoy being hated by absolutely everyone? Are you obsessed with proclaiming the GOAT status of your quarterback, even though he's a boring crank who thinks that drinking water cures sunburns? Does the prospect of having an owner who frequents underage brothels and is close friends with mango-flavored dictator Donald Trump appeal to you? Do you get down on your knees and thank God for Gronk so that everyone forgets your other famous tight end was a convicted murderer? Do you feel compelled to cheat even though you're way ahead like some sort of football Richard Nixon? If the answer to these questions is yes, order your Pat's jersey today. There's plenty of room on this bandwagon. <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, buddy. <laughs> Welcome back to The Resupply with me, Guy Nick Store. And me, DK. Bringing you your weekly double tap of all things Laser Force and Space Marines. Um, so, first things first, you, you would have noticed a, a wee bit of ad copy at the start of this one. Motherfucker didn't tell me that that was happening. So, <laughs> thanks man, appreciate it. <laughs> it's always great to have sponsors for the show. <laughs> Um, now we just need to find someone who wants to pay us to record this, and we'll be good. Um, oh, is that how the other podcasts are so successful? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we could like hit up Audible.com because they they apparently sponsor every single podcast that I listen to on a regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> Capitalism, how does it work? <laughs> um, all right. So since we left you last, there's there's actually there's been some interesting. Um, uh developments in old guy next door's uh ambitions to play <laughs> to play nationals this year so please tell the world <laughs> uh, basically like I, I think it was within the space of the so we, sometimes we we bank these episodes right we record on the same day and and that's kind of how this shit works within the space of like uh, 24 hours <laughs> i was i was on Air New Zealand's website buying tickets to come to Detroit. So it's official, folks. I'm I've been FOMO'd slash peer pressured by our own podcast into buying <laughs> into buying tickets to come to Detroit. So yours truly well, will be I, there. I think it took me 16 episodes last year before I finally got <laughs> open into doing it. it. Took Steve one day. So there you go, everybody. I've got uh I got poor convictions apparently. I easily swayed. So um i'm i'm well on board the hype train now uh now i can actually you know talk about well peer, try to peer pressure people into coming to detroit <laughs> as soon as i'm coming now as well i've got i've got no excuse neither do you folks go on go online buy a plane ticket come hang out at nationals um it's gonna be what july Ju what are the dates again july 20th <laughs> 20, 22nd is, I believe, when it starts. The, I didn't know I was going to have to have information. I better double check my, my facts here. As, this is so, why we can't get real sponsors, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. As yes, as Monday, said. July 22nd. Okay, cool. Um, and it's it's running for that week, so uh, come hang out and have a mean time. Um, and if I haven't already met you, I'm, I'm, keen, I'm keen to meet people I haven't met already, and there's a large contingent at Detroit that I haven't met, so... I'm looking forward to at, meeting at the current you. rate of growth we will be expecting about 25 teams given how many people are being fomoed <laughs> in on a weekly basis yeah if, if if my rate of fomo ness is anything to go by uh yeah it's gonna be a big tournament um so, so i think the Lo i think the loveland guys are experiencing something similar i've been told that uh loveland b has something like three additional interested players oh, wow. who want to go now so, so we wait. are having some discussions here about what may happen if we end up with more than 10 teams so that's so that they're already sending two teams right correct and that was two confirmed teams so there, there's another three people on top of that yeah, it was two confirmed teams, plus I think both were already planning to roster seven. I right. think A team was also going to bring in A Kodama. B team had another rumored player, at least, who was a Merc, um, but now obviously with more Loveland players potentially coming, yeah. that could change. Interesting. So, yes, but I guess spaces will be filling up pretty quick, right? Um, and as far as I was aware, you know, there was, there was maybe eight or nine... Uh, op, uh, 
options for for mercs but that was before i bought a plane ticket and actually um i might not be the only one from auckland that's that's looking to to come over uh, aside from obviously the other two guys that have already bought their tickets um we've got i've actually got one other guy uh lonzo who who was uh said to me he is coming (laughs) um now he hasn't bought a plane ticket yet so you know his history shows us that until you buy a plane ticket you're not confirmed coming but uh he's pretty likely and then we have another two guys that are seriously considering coming um old leech and uh morange who both attended last year so um Auckland is actually looking like it's going to send a full team to Detroit. Nice, um, get on it. Yeah, I mean that's that's a massive surprise to me. I, it was surprising that um, Mr. Doom and Kamikaze bought their tickets so soon um, off the back of how much fun they had at, at Brisbane last year. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I mean I don't know. Oh, we we fielded obviously we fielded a team um, at Sacramento. Uh, a full Auckland team there, but um, well, I'm yeah. going to put some scare quotes around that one. <laughs> Why? Because you, uh... you had old man fan, <laughs> you had imitation DK with like half a functioning kidney that week. <laughs> True, and, and you had Jeff, who's never lived in New Zealand. Oh, all, that's so. right. Fucking, I miss the Jew. Um, okay, so yeah, <laughs> so we'll check. We'll check a wee asterisk up there. <laughs> um, but still, all right. So yeah, that's that's pretty. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but. It having a full Auckland team does throw a wee bit of a spanner into the works, um, because obviously there's only so many teams that can actually play during the week, um, and we're already at nine, ten. We we were at nine with a ten virtually assured. Yeah, and that, um, that so team now was... it looks like it, it may it may be more. Which fortunately, we have had some discussions about how to accommodate more than 10 teams. Yeah. Um, Beans and I have been discussing it. Um, just as a side note to everybody who's going to the tournament scene, do not send Beans like 20 messages a day asking what the schedule is. He gets enough of those on a daily basis. We are working on the schedule. Trust me. Um, it is being handled, so don't ask him. There'll be, uh, I would imagine, uh, any revisions will get put up on the, the LF tournaments site. Yeah, we have to do a few drafts and things like that first. Um, the the drawback to having more than 10 teams is 10 is really the cap that we can do in terms of doing a proper round-robin play where yeah. every team is going to be assured to play every other team. Once we cross the threshold into 11, 11 is a really bad number, but basically once we cross over to 12 teams, which if we get to 11, we can probably get to 12, with everybody who wants to merc and everything like that. Yeah then it's going to have to be pool play of some sort. So we're going to have to split the tournament into flights, which is going to cut down a little bit on how many games everybody can play, but that's the cost of growing the scene, Yeah. number one. And there is still going to be quite a bit of play for the week. And having it split into two separate flights is going to make the scheduling actually quite a bit easier than it otherwise would have been, since we can essentially have two shifts that play during the day. Right. Um. I guess the the drawback from that is that everyone obviously doesn't get to play everyone else, um, and, which is a bummer. Yeah, um, but I mean, to be fair, like the amount of times that the Syracuse guys have played the Detroit guys, uh, and you know the amount of times that we've played against Brisbane, um, I guess it's not the end of the world. But still, it, it'd be nice. It'll, it's always nice to to play everyone. Um, for sure. Yeah. And it, it is possible, especially with the way that finals work out. Um, it'll be, I guess, kind of similar to the way, uh, like the world cup does it where you take kind of the, the top seeds from, from each group and you basically kind of cross them back over each other when it rolls around to finals. So you will play people from the other pools right. when it comes to finals. So at least all the best teams should have a chance to play against each other at some point during yeah. the week. Uh, but that it, it could just be, something different to try so at the very least you know we can we can do something different than we've done in previous years and this is all this is all just uh speculation currently right we're not saying that yes yeah okay um this is one of the ideas that have kind of been thrown into the ring um when you have this many 
this many teams, I guess. Um, the other thing as well, so, you know, I hear from X zone or current zone players that have played comp- competitive zone, um, you know, they say, look, we get like 20 or 30 teams at a nationals and, you know, why can't, why can't laser force do the same to me? I mean, there's a, there's a few like, you know, massive differences. Like they play, they play three teams at a time or something. Um, yes. And the, the games, as far as I'm aware, are slightly shorter. Um, significantly shorter. Uh, oh, really? Say. Um, it's, uh, unless you, you know, unless you're Brisbane and you eliminate <laughs> the other team. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, they they run their tournaments. I think longer than a week. They're like two week long tournaments. Sometimes is that? Am I? Did, did I hear that correctly from someone? Uh, that I can't give you one hundred percent accurate information on. Uh, perhaps we should have somebody who knows the zone scene a little bit better on at some point. Maybe nah, once we'll just, uh, we finish, <laughs> we'll just per- perpetuate incorrect facts, if you will. <laughs> Beans, I'm going to make you come on this podcast, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I don't want to be here for that. <laughs> it seems like a tender moment for you two to share. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean, there are some there are some massive differences that, and I'm going to get a little bit, you know, elitist and say that Space Marines is a is a far more complicated game than most other um, tag competitive games. Um, I I'm going to be folks. overtly elitist and say that it is 100% the case that Space Marines is superior to all the other forms <laughs> of laser tag that are played. Oh, God. Use the S word, even. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I would have to agree with you. You know, I don't think we're very biased on this show, but, you know, it's not it's, at all. It's a well known fact <laughs> that, that Space Marines is superior to all. It is known. Yeah. <laughs> it is known. Um, uh, yeah, so. I think those those things really um, hinder, I guess, Space Marines from being a, a larger um, competitive game. But maybe that's just kind of how it has to be. Um, unless, you know... To, to some people, extent. Yeah, unless that... people are willing to, to kind of make some sacrifices in terms of, okay, well, we this is the new norm. We don't get to play everyone at Nationals. Um, if you don't make... If you're if you're not good, <laughs> if you get beat all week, <laughs> you don't get to play in finals, which is how it is for most other competitive sites. You've got to earn your way into into the final, you know, six or eight or four or whatever it is. Um, you get rewarded for for uh, being good. It's true, and we can't make absolutely everything happen. And unless we did want to extend the tournament to two weeks, but then it gets to a delicate matter of can people get enough time off <laughs> yeah wanna, i know much time playing this <laughs> see i would i would happily do that um but well yeah you and i, I are not crazy people we, yeah. we actually enjoy playing laser tag. <laughs> that's right we don't have kids uh <laughs> fairly uh foot loose and fancy free with how my working schedule works so i'm i'm game if, if everyone else is game um yep. but yeah get on our level folks <laughs> yeah come play for two weeks um Hashtag Auckland 2020. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I guess having having a larger scene is definitely, like I feel is definitely a good thing. Um, it's good for uh, quality purposes. It's good for the local sites who have more and more teams playing at their site. You know, I think everyone, every owner would love to have a, a member base of 30 playing there on a, you know, on a league night or a members night once a week. Um, but it's just, you know, it's not really the case. No, not for everybody, unfortunately. Mm. And but your... this, this has the, the potential to really be the biggest laser force tournament ever. This one does. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I'm not surprised cause you know, Detroit is a destination, <laughs> 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 but yeah, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens with, with, um, I guess, um, <clears throat> the guys from Lovelands, and I, I think the the sooner we can kind of get confirmed, actual confirmed numbers. I'm looking at you, Leech and Morange. Um, then you know the better it is for the scene because we can actually start working out a proper tournament draw um, and set an expectation with people that are coming. Yes, 
And make sure that you guys come in early enough that we can all track down to Cedar Point, because I know you want to be in for that. So actually, I've I purposefully um, uh, worked my ticket so that I'm coming to Cedar Point. I, I had a look at the website because I'd never heard about the place before. Um, if you love roller coasters, <laughs> <laughs> you want to come to Cedar Point with us. <laughs> it should be pretty cool. Um, Excellent. Maybe we can work in some some more videos that they sell them the same way that uh, Movie World <laughs> did at Gold Coast. That was pretty magic. I'll I'll find. <laughs> I'm not sure if there's a, a link on online anywhere, but I'll see if I can maybe cut some footage in of me and DK riding backwards on a on a roller coaster, um, <laughs> <laughs> getting incredible adrenaline fatigue. <laughs> um, but yeah, Cedar Point folks on the Friday, and then I think afterwards uh, there's talks of of a Vegas trip. Um, so <laughs> oh, so that that can be after. Okay, that'll be after. Yeah. Um. So I'm I'm pretty excited about that as well. But yeah. Well, speaking of Vegas trips, following up on what we talked about with how quote unquote close St. George is, mm. there has been some talk among Sacramento players of organizing a trip out there. Oh, we don't cool. know when exactly it is going to happen, but that is kind of in the works. And we have also discovered that there is a site that runs Gen 8 in Sparks, Nevada, which is just outside of Reno, <laughs> roughly about two hours from Sacramento. If you thought Detroit was a destination, get ready for Reno, the biggest <laughs> little city on earth. <laughs> Sparks is an amazing name for a place. <laughs> Oh, the Sparks will definitely be flying there. Uh, I guess this site is also part of a bowling alley, so we're not entirely sure what's going to happen with that. But being only about two hours from Sacramento, um, I think earlier on today, Maniac said, um, so we're definitely going tomorrow, right? Because we, we definitely need to get some laser tag in. So I, I think it may be happening sooner rather than later. Yeah. Hey, you got, uh, do you think that you'll get like you know 12 of you to make the trip or oh that would be amazing yeah. if we could actually get there with enough to play space marines convince them to let us play space marines and maybe even pull in a few of their members i have no idea if they have members yeah i literally just learned about the site and the fact that they're running gen 8 today so there are a lot of unanswered questions but once those questions get answered we'll be ready for a trip report that'll be on the podcast all oh, right on um actually speaking of like other sites there's a a new, I think I touched on it um, in a, uh, over the last couple of weeks. There's a new yeah. site that that opened up not far from us, um, which is part of an FEC, and uh, we went as a group. We had, I think it was nine of us, so we had one of the staff guys um, step in and, and uh, get a taste of Space Marines. Um, but yeah, it was pretty cool. Like it's all safari themed, and you know. Uh, the, <laughs> you, the, all the all the walls have been freshly painted. So if you you know, us being uh, as into it as we get, you know, you're running and like slamming into walls and like um, <laughs> we, at points we were like covered head to toe in like neon dust. Um, so we looked like we've been to like a festival somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> did, did the color run? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, it was pretty cool actually. It was it was um, nice to be able to get a uh, a taste of Space Marines in a in a fresh maze, um, because it's not something that you know you always get to do. Usually, it's at nationals. Um, if if you haven't played a site before, um, that's really the only time we we get to to play in a fresh arena. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, yeah, for it, sure, that's awesome. Yeah, it might have to be again hashtag twenty twenty. Um, <laughs> when people come over, maybe we'll hit that site up. But yeah, it was pretty fun. They also got. Yeah, I, I still need to get that that twenty site achievement on uh <laughs> on my my Laser Force account. So the so, more sites that we get under our belts, the better. The the one drawback is they don't currently have membership, but hopefully they rectify that. Um, you know. Oh in yeah. Time for people coming over, so. Yeah. And laser force operators, come on! If you're listening, you need to enable those kinds of functions at the very least. And I'm being totally serious here, at least for advertising purposes, because that kind of database is crazy. just invaluable to be able to to get out advertising to to your base. Absolutely. And it's one of the reasons why, just in general, um, I think no, I know laser force is superior to other laser tag systems. <laughs> hey, drop the S bomb again. <laughs> um. Get that explicit rating out there. <laughs> Demonetized. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but 
But yeah, so um, uh, I guess in the the next uh, next coming weeks, um, hopefully, do, do you know if Beans is sort of, or if you guys have talked about like a a date for when there'll be some mock schedules come out, or is that all sort of still up in the air? Hopefully soon. It is still kind of up in the air because we're still waiting on confirmation. Again, the likelihood of more players coming. We're still trying to iron out the details of what we need to prioritize. Is it right. number of games? Is it how long we're actually playing during the day? Because we're already kind of looking at a hard cap on how long we have to play. Yeah. Unfortunately, the laws of physics being what they are, we only have so many hours a day in which to conduct laser tag. <laughs> and kind of some of our, our early drafts here, we're, we're running like 15 hour days. And yeah. that's, that's getting to be a little, a little tough. Oof. We, um, Cause we absolutely do need to be done by early Friday evening. Yeah. So we played, we played what, 12 hour days in Sacramento from midday to midnight. Um, and that was rough, man. Uh, cause you know, once you finish at midnight, there's not really any time uh, afterwards to, to hang out with anyone. You just kind of, um, you know, go back to your accommodation. And if everyone had, if, if everyone's staying in different places, then there's no social hangouts because, you know, everyone's just too tired. And um, we were, were recording the podcast at the end of each day, so we wouldn't get back until like 2.30 in the morning. Um, yeah, and then I that was a to, nice uh, a nice way to end the day, though. Yeah, yeah it was, it's a pretty cool way to wind down, but then I've got to go back and cut it all. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so hopefully we can figure out a way. Like, obviously, people want people are there to play laser tag, and I and I get that, but um, that's that's not the only reason I think that we all gather. Um, part of it is to see each other. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So if if you're missing that aspect of nationals, nationals is just uh, a a little bit duller. Um, but hopefully we can work out a way that we can uh, satiate both um, both reasons for coming. That that is the challenge, but that that again might be the upside if we switch to pool play, a way to manage the schedule a little bit better, mm. and at least then for the teams that aren't playing in that block, there is a lot more chance for socializing, yeah, for, for doing something else, or for even coming down to the center just to hang out, yeah, which which people do I think anyway. Like it's it's weird when you're at a place to do a thing. Um, and you you've got some free time you got like a block of three or four hours or something where you where you've got downtime you kind of had a loss as to um what to do what to fill that time with other than being down and hanging out with the people that you're there to see so even those you know those long blocks of time um get a little bit wasted if if, <laughs> if you're just sitting there watching laser force um anyway so yeah, true yeah <laughs> um which I feel like I still end up doing a fair amount. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's good because like if you, I think um, we filled again we filled some of the time in Sacramento by uh, jumping. Like I remember jumping on um, Facebook Live and like live streaming a bunch of stuff with uh, Wolfman and Virus. Um, yeah, and that that was really cool because it, it kind of, um, you know, for people that aren't able to make the trip, it it lets them kind of feel like they're there as well which you know you should just be there but <laughs> yeah if you can't make it then then that's i guess the next best thing and you never know what's going to go viral this this may be the way in which laser force <laughs> saturates just the the collective consciousness of the internet i mean uh, grax meme game is on point so like <laughs> <laughs> it that, is i would not get into a meme more with her yeah i would die <laughs> um so yeah, so it it should be good. Hopefully we can um accommodate uh everyone that wants to come, but I think this might be one of the first nationals that I can think of where people won't get to play that actually want to play. Um which is sad. Um and, and by that I mean, you know, it's it's more for um capacity sake rather than you know, can't afford the time off or whatever. Um Yeah, but that would certainly be I guess the best problem we've ever had question mark is we have too many people who want to play competitive space Marines. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it is a, I guess a good problem unless you're one of those people who are on the bubble and, you know, 
uh, don't get to play because their site's already, you know, their site already has two teams or, um, yeah, or whatever the case might be. They, they, they're a merc and, you know, some jerk with a microphone decided that he was coming to nationals. So you don't get to play anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah. Well, that's that's why I think we've started getting the groundwork in place for 12 teams, because if we are successful in Project FOMO, <laughs> patent pending, then, you know, you you probably won't be the only one, and we do need to be prepared for that kind of situation. Yeah. So I'm going to offer my apology in advance to Rusty, who I know would like to play 50 games a day for, <laughs> f- for five consecutive weeks. Um but at some point, we do have to say, well, if we're going to give everybody a chance to play, we may not be able to do all the things that we've done in previous years. But yeah. we'll find a way for everybody to get in meaningful games, to get their money's worth, and do everything that we love about Laser Force. And I think, like, uh, you know, how you say meaningful games, like that's that's a really important distinction. So, like, if, if I think you touched on it uh, in a chat thread or something... Um, there there are a lot of games that people play that don't mean anything um and so if we can find a way to either replace those with lesser games but that have more meaning to to certain outcomes then maybe that's a better way to go i i think so especially since that's part of the tournament experience generally Mm. is the round robin and the seating is kind of there to to learn the field but at the end of the day, you do need to, you know, perform on the highest stage. Yeah. And to really get in there and mix it up with the other teams. Because yeah. I know in the in the past when we've had, you know, tournaments where we've run, say, three rounds back in the days, in the dark ages, when we only had six teams that would compete <laughs> in nationals or something like that. Yeah. By the time you rolled around that third round, most of the seeding was kind of already determined. Yeah. So it gave you a chance to try some different things, maybe a lot of people to rotate around a little bit, but they weren't games that had a ton of meaning in that sense. They weren't going to determine seeding. Nobody was going to get knocked out as a result. So I think, you know, by day three or four, if we can cut down on those and move to games that have a little bit more meat to them, that's kind of what we're aiming for. Uh, With that in mind, though, I mean, those games still have value. Um, I think, like, I I remember being on some, some weaker teams and, you know, the the games that don't you know that when you're gonna play some of the top tier teams you're gonna get your ass smashed but um playing some of the other teams that are kind of more at your skill level those games were really fun because they became um really competitive even though the outcome didn't really matter necessarily the the experience of playing another team that's evenly matched with you um has a lot of value so um, oh yeah and just getting the reps in yeah it's really what you're looking for especially if you're a team that doesn't have a ton of tournament experience. Yeah. That's how you're going to get better. Absolutely. Um, rather than, you know, playing Brisbane A team from last year's nationals <laughs> who were like, <laughs> well, that will make you better. You just really are going to need to take a very long view of it. <laughs> just like how eating kale makes you better. Uh, it's, it's <laughs> shitty, but <laughs> Hard to swallow, but, you know, sometimes you just got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely earn that explicit rating now. Yeah. <laughs> um, you've got your own S word. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll throw my ones out. <laughs> um, so that'll probably uh, do us for this week, unless you've got something else that you want to kind of tack on the end. Uh, not yet, but we have a ton of topics that we're hoping to get through in the next few weeks. We're going to have guests back on here pretty soon. Mm. Um, I think one of our kind of plans that's coming up here is to just do a couple of podcasts about how it is you prepare for nationals and getting your member site in check and, and doing kind of a, a deep dive on the, the space Marines positions. Yeah. So if those are things that interest you, stay tuned. Yeah. And if you, if you've got your own ideas about what you'd like to hear, or if you want to come on and like, you know, speak your piece about something that we've either discussed or, or any new topics, like flick one of us a message on Facebook. Cause, uh, you know, the, the less work that we have to do, the better. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and I will read your advertisement on air. So <laughs> yeah, feel free to hit up our marketing department, which is DK <laughs> and, uh, we'll work in somehow. It'll be seamless. Just like this <laughs> send, send your ideas to pat 69 at altavista.com. <laughs> Alta Vista. 
Um, <laughs> all right. Well, look, we'll um, we'll leave it at that for this week. But um, for this week, I've been Guy Next Door. And I've been DK. Happy birthday, GND. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Always remember to backtrack, kids. We'll see you next week.